Hey YouTube, how's it going? Nick Weiss here, and today I'm going to be replacing these old school XLR connectors with some new Neutrik. The model is NC3FXX and NC3MXX connectors. The F stands for female, the M stands for male. And uh, they are the newest series of Neutrik connectors, the NC3 FX and NC3MX work very similarly, so uh, if you have those, you can most likely get a lot out of this video too. So the problem with these cables is I uh, had them for a couple years, just super cheap long cables that I bought on Amazon, and at my last gig, um, the female end of this was crackling when I attached a mic to it, so at that point it's just like done. So it, um, you know, at least for me, <laughs> I ain't dealing with any crackling mics. So I uh, ordered some of these Neutrik connectors on Amazon. They are expensive. They're about six bucks per connector, but well worth it. They are the industry standard and for good reason. Um, they are super heavy duty and uh, actually quite easy to work with as well. So to get rid of the old connectors, uh, I'm just going to cut the ends off of them. Uh, to see what's inside of them, what you do is you just unscrew the little screw you see in the top of these. And let's see, Leatherman, you want to cooperate today and get this done? Yeah. There we go. That little screw comes out and. This insert pops through. And that's it. So rather than bother desoldering it, I'm just going to cut the end off and use some new ends and make some new connections here. So to get the cable ready, what you do is, well, first I'll get this old boot off of that. And here is a good idea. What end did I take off there? I took off the male end. So a good idea before you even get to work on these, so you don't forget to put the boot on the connector, is to... Here's the male package. <laughs> so it's got this insert in it, this metal connector, this is the boot that I'm talking about, and this I call the jacket. I think that's what they call it. And so this boot goes on the end of this cable right here. You just kind of just shove it on there. Because if you solder it up, and you're going to do this if you're new to this <laughs> once or twice. I still do it every once in a while. If you solder the end on, if you solder the insert on without removing without putting that boot on first, you're not going to be able to put the connector on. You're going to have to unsolder it and redo it after putting this this boot on because this is ultimately going to screw onto the end of the connector. So you got to put that boot on first. The earlier you do it, the better and the less mistakes you're going to make. So I got that on there now. And now I'm going to strip the wire here. I go about uh, three quarters of an inch down, gently cut it, and rotate it, cut it and rotate it. A sharp knife is also a really good thing to use here. And let's see how well that worked. So I gently cut it because I don't want to cut the cables underneath it. And there we got about three quarters of an inch stripped away there, okay? Inside these cables, they're all going to be a little bit different. This is about as cheap as they come. So this has a foil uh, shield that goes around the cable. This bare copper wire that you see here stranded around it will be connected to the Neutrik connector, to the XLR connector, and that makes contact with the shield, which is what shields your cable. So there's also some string and that and the end of the foil that I'm going to cut off. 
The string is just there. I think it just makes the cable stronger. Resists uh, pulling and cutting. So the string and extra foil shield I'm just going to cut off here. And I'm going to wind, I'm going to twist up the bare copper wire that's there and make, basically make a wire out of it. So it's going to be connected to one of the three connecting lugs on the XLR connector insert. All right. So now let's take a look at our insert here. This, these are the three lugs that you're going to be soldering the wires to. They're numbered. One is going to be your ground. One is the bare copper wire. Two is hot and three is cold. So I'm going to go red number two and white number three. I like to arrange the cables the wires in the cable to match the shape of what they're going to be. So, um, let's see, I can see they're, they're clearly labeled from the bottom here. So I can see, of course, I'm working upside down and backwards for the benefit of the camera. So, aren't you lucky? Um, all right, I can see where one, two, and three are. So one is going to be on one side, two, the hot is on the other side, and three is the one in the middle. And they're going to be like this. So now I've got the cables more or less set up how they're going to be soldered into the lugs here. I do have to strip the ends of each of those cables. So these are, gosh, probably 24 gauge. And this is a stripper for very fine wire. This will probably work here. And each of those are about a quarter inch. Strip about a quarter inch off. Right, that look good. Yeah, I don't see any cable in there. You don't want to cut cable off with it. I'm going to go with the 22 on this one, see if that works. Just to be careful. Yeah, it barely works. So 24 is a little better. All depends on the cable. This is about as cheap as it comes, so this wire is going to be really light. Really fine. Okay. So what did I have before? I had one, two, and three. I still got everything kind of arranged how I wanted it. Right, this little soldering guy is going to be very useful because he's going to hold the two ends that I need to work with here. So one of his hands holds the cable over here. The other hand holds the... XLR connector end, and more or less in the right arrangement. Nope, completely upside down. Exactly. Perfect. I'm going to double check, make sure I got the numbers right. Yep. All right. So before I can try to connect them, I'm going to tin each surface. So I'm going to fire up the soldering iron. I'm going to tin each surface first, so that means just getting a little solder on each wire. And each lug, each connecting lug. I heat the lug and wait for the solder to melt onto it. I don't just glob solder in there because you don't know if it's actually sticking to the metal. And sometimes, like right now, it can take a little while. Putting a little solder on the tip of the iron will usually get things melting a little faster. 
All right, so now I've got everything kind of more or less arranged to be mated together here. And I'm going to get them real close, heat up the first lug. And I always make sure I can see the solder melting down onto the wire to make sure I got a nice connection. And then when it melts, it's nice and shiny. Hold it. Don't let it go. Try not to move it at all. Because moving it around can create a cold solder joint and that would be weak and will possibly eventually fail. So if the solder looks nice and shiny and it's all uh, stuck in there real nice and tight, you did a good job. Number this is actually lug number three. You see the solder got a little cloudy there. It's just kind of moving around in there. I'm going to redo it. a lot better. And don't touch the other ends of those. Don't touch these ends <laughs> either after you did it because they're really hot. Don't ask me how I know that. All right. I redid that one too because the first time I did it, it got all cloudy for whatever reason. So there it is. Now they're soldered on. And clean off the iron a little bit. The next step in getting the connector on is to put the white jacket on the cable. So you can take it out of the little soldering guy. And this jacket just slips on the cable here. Those ends are still nice and hot, aren't they? Okay. There's little grooves in the side of the, the black insert that the white piece kind of slides into. You just got to kind of work it, work it around. You'll get it on there. It'll be all good. And now the, the boot part comes up over that and our cable end then goes on the other side. Now you just kind of just spin it around until it gets in there. There we go. And now twisting the black part of the boot, not twisting the metal. If you twist the metal around, you're going to be twisting your cable and you'll break your cable. So I'm twisting the black boot onto the threads and get it nice and tight. And there you have a just about bulletproof connection. So if you found that to be ultra exciting, I'm going to do the female end as well, which is almost exactly the same, but just for the sake of doing it, I'll shoot that too. Thanks for watching if you're leaving at this point. All right, so I've got our female connector here. I'll spare the tour of the inside of the connector and cut the end off. And we are now going to strip about three quarters of an inch, just like we did before. Right. Now, since I remembered it right now, I'm going to drop everything 
and put the boot on. This is the female stuff. And just like the other thing, the boot has to go on before we solder anything. And that actually kind of not a great idea to do it then because I twisted up some of the little bare copper wires, but that ain't the end of the world. Um, yeah, just put that boot on whenever you can, whenever you remember to, because soldering it on without putting that on is an annoying fact of cable making that you're going to do at some point. So anytime you can avoid it, you'll save yourself a couple minutes. All right. So I got my uh, bare copper wire separated, twisted up into a wire. The shielding foil and strings will be cut off. And we're left with our three wires, just like we did before. Now remember what, how they were numbered? Sure you do. Number one is the ground. Number two is hot. We're going to call that red. And uh, number three is going to be the white or cold. Um, you know, it w of course, it doesn't matter what uh, conductor you use for two and three, as long as you match them up on either side. So um, if you want to call white hot, feel free. Just make sure you do it on both sides. Uh, I'm going to strip our little wires. In these K in these ones, it was 24 gauge. Worked pretty perfectly. And depending on how high quality the cable is, the Wires might be a little thicker than that, but all right, got that done, got that done, and firing up the soldering iron. Soldering iron is fired up. Solder boy, you ready to go to work? Sure, am, both. All right, great. So I'm gonna tin the ends of the wire. Touch the wire first, get the solder on. Oh, that's good video right there. Finger right in the way, huh? Good and tinned. Now I'm going to tin each connector on the nitric here, and I'm going to kind of reverse the order of the cables as I have them on. There's a little spring on the bottom of this nitric that I can that the solder guy can grab onto. I've got to switch the order of these cables around though because number one is now closest to me. Number three is always going to be in the middle and number two is going to be on the other side. So I just 
Again, I like to or organize those cables in the order they're going to be used. And before I go to work on this, I'm going to tin, throw a good, decent glob of solder in there in each lug. Boy, doing this for a video is not convenient. And all right. Good, good, good. Each lug now has a small pool of solder in it. And why don't I just do the least convenient first? <laughs> okay. Technically, just touching the lug should heat it up enough, and it did, to melt it. For that solder to crawl down that wire. That means it's all good and melted all along it. Hold it for a long time until it dries, and we're good. Perfect. That one went perfectly. Let's do number two. That's actually lug number three. Good and melted. That's actually going quite easily. And lug number one with the bare wire. Be careful not to touch that wire while you're working on it. And I think we have a winner there. Right, just like we did before. Put this jacket on the wire. And the cable here. Alright, and find the little groove that it fits in on the insert. Slide the boot up. Don't drop your soldering iron on your carpet. And right, trying to get that off of the soldering iron. There we go. And you just kind of feel around how this easily slides on there and twist the boot, not the metal part. Crank it down real good. Oh yeah. And there you are, all done. Hey, here's one thing I didn't mention earlier. You can test the continuity of these cables or, you know, with, with any uh, uh, multimeter you might have that has a continuity tester on it. Now, there's like a cable testing thing you can get, and it's like a Behringer cable tester that costs like 70 bucks or something. I don't, you know, I'd almost kind of, <laughs> I don't even know if I would trust that thing. But uh, a good old uh, uh, multimeter will do the trick. Now, you know, these flukes cost a ton of money, but uh, um, any cheapo one you can come across would probably have a um, continuity test function on it and you can just uh, you know pick a number lug that's uh, number one in the female side and find pin number one on ah there we are and it does not light up number two or number three I'm touching pin number one yay it works Let's try number three in the middle. Yep, and neither of the other two work, so that's good. 
and number two, right there. Ta-da! Double check that I got it right. I did. Ta-da! There you go. Thank you for watching.